If you really think about the Regional Environmental Center, we are an organization that came straight out of the systems and political changes in Central and Eastern Europe. So we are bridging a lot of good sense from East and West and South and North and with the mission of creating a better environment. So when the issue came of setting up operations, we operate from the Baltic states to the Visegrad countries, the whole of Balkans, including Turkey, but we transfer lessons learned to other regions. 200 colleagues out of 31 different nationalities operating mostly hundreds of us in St. Andre, next to the bank of the Danube. And um, S Susanna, I mean, uh, we mm -hmm. experienced, I say we experienced, but people in, uh, in Europe, particularly Central Eastern Europe, experienced heavy flooding earlier on this year. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess we can't say whether that was directly um, linked uh, to climate change. But what we can say is it probably gave um, people some interesting experiences and lessons in how they can prepare mm -hmm. um, their countries. How would you assess the um, ability of countries in Central Eastern Europe to deal with um, changing, changing mm -hmm. conditions? Is it, is, it, is it in a fairly good situation at the moment? Uh, it's a very serious situation nowadays in Central Eastern Europe because the climate data in the past show very clearly that there is a temperature increase the number of the heat waves is increasing and at the same time the precipitation patterns change a lot meaning that we have heavy rainfalls within a short period extremely big amount of precipitation is occurred and in other period we are lacking precipitation and we have severe problems of drought and this characterizing for especially southeastern european countries and also hungary mm -hmm. and and from your experience, given your uh, climate change policy expert, what um, in particular do those countries, what in particular does, does um, uh, Hungary need, need to work on? Um, if we, it's a bit hard just asking you to talk about some mm -hmm. 20 countries or so, but if you uh, just took Hungary, for instance, what would Hungary, what would the government there really need to pick up on in terms of, say, adaptation? Mm -hmm. So adaptation policies are very much behind the mitigation policies. Uh, mitigation aspects are more or less covered what we can do, but in the field of adaptation, there is no real adaptation strategy, which is just being elaborated on national level. But adaptation is something which is happening on the ground, so it's very important to have local adaptation strategies. And uh, just recently started new project, what I thought is a good example to introduce, is aiming at providing with very detailed information for the decision makers, including climate data from the past, climate production data, and also including vulnerability uh, and impact parameters for different sectors, ecosystems, and natural systems as well. And based on this detailed information, the policymakers will be able to develop and shape adaptation strategies on local and municipal levels. Mm -hmm. Marta, in terms of um, uh, your interaction with um, politicians, I guess uh, Central and Eastern Europe, uh, historically, like most of Europe, has, has relied heavily on coal and other, um, I guess, what people might say, polluting forms of energy. What, what, um, how receptive do you find politicians are when you speak to them or when you present your policy proposals to them regarding how they can perhaps clean up their, clean up their energy systems? Uh, the question is quite interesting. The reason is that we are a non-advocacy in many sense. So what we do, we work with all the stakeholders, enabling them to get the right information and providing a neutral table for them to be able to address the questions country by country, region by region. We have projects like uh, the regions for low carbon economy where from Southeast Europe down to the Mediterranean and Western part of Europe, including also our part of the world, are talking about good practices of how region can do the changes. And we do believe that policymakers are very much uh, influenced by also the opportunities to take decisions on very important European perspectives. And it's a very difficult decision. You have to 
understand, especially politicians are elected for every four years, so they have to look for what the constituencies really want. So if we enable the constituencies and inform them, then there is a very good chance of moving forward.